Welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we are going to cover the module Environment and Economics from the uh, paper Environment and Society. I am Devisha. I am a faculty at uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Uh, basically, today's uh, module we are going to cover about the, um, uh, we, we are going to introduce about the natural resources, their classifications, values and concepts of valuation. Today's contents of discussion would be thus, introduction to natural resources, types of natural resources, distribution of natural resources, natural resources specifically to the Indian subcontinent, uh, values of uh, nature, valuation of uh, nature, categories of uses, environment economics, problems of economic valuation. So let's get into the introduction uh, part of uh, natural resources first. Nature, uh, natural resources are materials of natural origin that can be used to satisfy human needs and these natural resources include water, land, biodiversity, minerals and fossil fuels, wind and sunlight. Now the characteristics of natural resources, the technology available for its use, the social and political factors that influence access to these resources are all significant factors that affect human beings. Now in economic terms, natural resources are stocks of materials that exist in natural environment that are useful in production or consumption either in, the raw, uh, in their raw state or after a minimal amount of processing. Now, air, seawater, etc. are not a direct use for uh, production or consumption. But however, technology can turn these uh, resources, uh, these into natural resources. For example, production of fresh water from seawater uh, is possible today. Hence, it is also called a natural resource. In recent times, lifestyles at a certain, uh, you know, section of societies are leading towards overconsumption of these resources and leading to its depletion. And thus, there is a need to ensure sustainable and equitable use of natural resources to achieve human development in an overall case. Let's move on to the topic types of uh, natural resources. Now natural resources can be classified on the basis of their origin, biotic and abiotic. So biotic uh, natural resource is obtained from living and organic ma uh, material of biological origin such as fish, fodder etc. Now fossil fuels such as coal and petroleum are also included in this category because they are formed from decayed organic matter. Now abiotic means uh, resources are, uh, are those uh, which come from non-living, non-organic material, uh, example water, minerals, uh, water, metals etc, not minerals. Uh, another um, useful way of classifying uh, resources is between renewable and non-renewable resources. Now, what is renewable resource and a non-renewable resource? Let's cover the first part which is the renewable resource. Renewable resources is a resource that either increases in quantity or otherwise renews itself over a you know, short period of time. Now it should be economically relevant short period of time. Uh, now hence if the rate of extraction takes account of limitations in the reproductive capacity of resources, renewables can provide yields over an infinite time horizon. Now example of renewable resources are water, sunlight, etc. Of course, the time frame for renewable uh, renewal uh, must be economically relevant as I mentioned earlier, uh, since some resources may be renewable in principle but not in practice. For example, forest. If you cut down forests as a resource system, it takes n number of years for it to reproduce. For example, it takes at least 15 plus years to uh, have an entire um, forest coming up, at least trees to grow up. So it's practically not a renewable resource. A renewable resource can be exhaustible, uh, that is it can be exhausted by overuse or more use uh, or non-exhaustible as well, that is cannot be exhausted by more use. Now sunlight is a non-exhaustible renewable resource but fish in a wetland ecosystem can be exhaustible. If you overfish it, that means the fish can get depleted. Now let's come on to the topic on renewable, non-renewable resource. Non-renewable resources are defined as all resources that do not grow or otherwise renew themselves over time. They exist in finite, finite quantities, so every unit consumed today reduces the amount available for future consumption. The most uh, common uh, examples of non-renewable resources are fossil fuels and mineral deposits. All of these are exhaustible resources and have to be 
use prudently per se. Now, considering their stage of uh, development, natural resources can be classified as actual, potential, reserve and stock resources. Now, let's look into the first category, which is the actual resource. Actual resources are those that have been surveyed, their quantity and quality determined and are being used in present times. Example, surface water is an actual resource. Its use depends upon the technology available and the cost involved. Now, what is a potential resource? The next category that we are going to talk about are um, they, these are uh, those that exist in a region and may be used in future. Example: oil and natural gas um, occurs in uh, within a various uh, within a specific region per se. But until the time it is actually drilled out and pulled out, uh, you know, to use, it remains a potential resource. Now let's talk about what is a reserve uh, resource. Reserve resource is uh, the part of an actual resource which can be developed profitably in future. And that's what is called a reserve resource. Now let's come to the part of what is stock resource. Stock resources are those that has been surveyed but cannot be used at present due to lack of technology. For example, uh, hydrogen. Now shale gas was once a stock resource. Now since there is technology to extract it, it is no more a stock resource. Uh, the next topic that we are going to cover is about the distribution of natural resources. Now many resources are concentrated in small number of countries while others have limited domestic supplies. Now nearly 90% of world's uh, proved oil reserves are located in just 15 countries. That is. Uh, more than 200 countries are there in the world and it's only present in 15 specific countries. Now, international trade moves these resources from one area uh, which has excess supply to areas of excess demand. Now, which also uh, serve to promote the most efficient use of these products. Now, many disputes over natural resources um, are there and can escalate even into riots. For example, uh, the, uh, the drift between uh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka over water resource, the river systems uh, that they share is one example that we can look into. Now, in India, uh, one can clearly now uh, notice how distribution and access of natural resources has a social and political dimension as well. In the social hierarchy per se, dominant groups have ownership and and access to large amounts of resources as compared to marginal groups. Let's start on the topic of natural resources specifically to India. The geology, geography and environment patterns of India lead to concentration of certain resources in some regions and scarcity in others. You can take the example of rainfall per se. Rainfall that Kerala or Assam gets is nothing compared to the rain that Rajasthan as a state gets. So, uh, the same way, plant and animal resources also vary with soil, forest type and climate of the region. Now, the non-renewable resources uh, of India are mapped and assessed uh, for their economic worth. However, what is very interesting is that the non-renewable resources are still not being assessed and that enormous economic value are undermined or neglected for a long period of time in spite of the fact that they are very essential for most of the livelihoods of the marginalized communities or even millions of the communities that depend on um, this, these natural resource systems. The value of resources became obvious only when or becomes basically obvious only when they start getting scarce and conflicts arise over the access and ownership of resources. Now, again, as an example, I can give you, um, you know, the, uh, the one that I discussed, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, or even Kerala and Tamil Nadu, um, um, or conflicts over land that we see in uh, rural parts of uh, India, or even urban parts of India. Um, there are um, conflicts over ownership of trees, uh, you know, fish in the pond, etc. These are all common factors that you see in a rural, uh, you know, setting. Uh, even sea, uh, which has uh, ample fish, is now, um, and it's theoretically a renewable resource, and you don't find so much fish if it is, um, you know, there's a fish drought in certain parts of India because of overfishing. Now, the development of India can only be achieved by understanding the true value and livelihood importance of natural resources per se. Now, we'll be moving on to understand what is the value of basically nature. Now, all people are um, dependent on nature. 
so either directly or indirectly we're all dependent on nature you know it's it it, it could be for uh, sustaining activities it could be for a livelihood activity it could be just for a day-to-day -day activity as such this goes beyond the economic valuation and viewing nature simply as providing goods and services in the form of natural resources is n just not enough like while it is well known that plants use up carbon dioxide and release oxygen we breathe uh, that oxygen it is very less known uh, or, or it's not so obvious that fungi uh, in small uh, soil um, invertebrates and over and even microbes are essential for plants to grow so a natural forest uh, maintains the water in a uh, river after the monsoon and absence of ants could destroy the uh, you know life on earth these are very small intricate factors that many of us do not know now this needs to be appreciated and understood well before we start calculating the worth of forest in terms of timber and wood or of any other resource only in the you know worth of productivity or how it produ uh, how productive is uh, it for us human beings per se so here uh, we will now look into va evaluation of uh, um, nature uh, that is the next topic that we are going to cover we had covered about the value of nature and how important it is not to look at uh, value of nature in terms of just economic factors but also those small intricate factors that is knitted into making uh, you know natural resources uh, which are available available to us so the valuation of nature uh, uh, this uh, uh, this discussion would be basically on what how we do the valuation of nature per se so in recent times attempts have been made to devise uh, measures for calculating value of uh, nature more focus has uh, has been on valuation of uh, nature natural resources often often in uh, monetary terms but other values of ecosystems and biodiversity should also be recognized so uh, there are you know some can we can divide value or uh, valuation values of nature into uh, two types here direct values and indirect values what is a direct value direct values are where humans make actual use of materials obtained from nature for example consuming fruits or plants vegetables uh, for our daily use uh, now uh, let's come into indirect values what is an indirect value indirect values uh, are those that are not associated with actual use uh, or even an option to use materials from um, uh, nature for example saving a species is uh, an indirect value that is added to the natural resource system now uh, um, there are also different categories other than direct and indirect we also can categorize into use value and non-use value Use value is defined as the value derived from actual use of a good or service. Now, non-use value uh, is a value assigned to a resource even if it is not being used or will not be used in future. Now, there are various uh, categories of uses uh, of these natural resource systems as, uh, as such. Uh, one could be the consumptive use value, productive use value, social and cultural value, ethical values, aesthetic values ecological or environment service environmental service values or optional values now let's look into the first category uh, which is uh, the uh, consumptive use value consumptive use value in this is a direct use value that refers to non market value of resources such as fruits grasses etc such resources are consumed directly without passing through a market they usually are not calculated but are often approximated per se. Uh, for example, people can directly collect fuel wood from the forest or medicinal plants from the forest, uh, fish or herbs uh, for, uh, from the natural surroundings. However, those who do not have this access needs to acquire them by other means. For example, people living in urban areas have to buy fruits, vegetables, etc. rather than procuring it from, you know, by themselves. Now let's come to the next uh, category which is the productive use value. Productive use value in this, uh, this is a direct use value that ascribed uh, to resources which can be sold or exchanged in the market. Example, fruits, fish, vegetables, etc. can be collected and sold in local markets per se. 
In many cases, value addition is done on small or large scale to improve the commercial value or the marketability. For example, smoked or dry fish fetches more money than the actual fish per se. Or fruits can be processed into, into jams or even pickles for that matter. And it, uh, it basically gives you more return. Now let's come into the next category which is the social and cultural value. This is an indirect value, uh, uh, use value ascribed by community as a part of social or cultural beliefs. Now plants such as Tulsi or people are considered sacred and many myths are attached to them. So snake, uh, another example would be snake uh, is considered as a symbol of good in some societies and evil in another society. Another example would be springs, streams and uh, rivers that are are considered homes of deities and many rituals are carried out next to flowing rivers. The next uh, category would be the ethical value that uh, we are going to discuss. This is an indirect value, a non-use value again. Some cultures believe that all forms of life have right to exist and they ascribe ethical values to natural elements. Hunting communities often believe that it is wrong to kill a pregnant animal or mother, mothers with uh, young ones. Children are taught not to harm animals or reflect, uh, respect water resources per se. They are often told not to waste water. What is it that? What is that uh, you know, makes an elderly person tell uh, a younger one that you should not waste water? It is the ethical value attached to it. Now feeding birds, putting, on, uh, putting out water during uh, summer are considered great services to life which are not always reflected in uh, to. Uh, which, is, uh, which are not always related to uh, religious beliefs. Now let's come to the aesthetic uh, values. This can be considered a direct uh, non-use value. It is ascribed towards aesthetics or pleasures derived from a species, a landscape or ecosystem in a non-consumptive manner. Now viewing nature for appreciating its beauty or uh, uh, gaining peace uh, you know, is common that you see from aesthetic uh, value. It also provides opportunities for recreational activities like bird watching, photography, etc. Uh, the next uh, category that we are going to explain is about the ecological envi or environmental service uh, uh, values. Now, value attached to environmental or ecological processes that are necessary for sustaining humans is what is called this particular ecological value systems, values per se. Now, example, forests maintain pure air, pure water and reduce carbon dioxide which helps protect against global warming. Another example would be pollination ensures fertilization and seed production uh, which is important for cultivation per se. Now the final value uh, uh, that we would be talking about, the category of values that we would be talking about is the option values. This is a non-use value again. Uh, UNEP 1995 has defined option value as the potential value of the resource for uh, future that is direct or indirect use. Option value is sometimes derived from the piece of an individual is willing to pay to retain the options of using services at a future date. Example, wild plants may not be of direct use at present but might be of some great importance um, because of of the, of the gene that could of its gene that could uh, basically develop a disease a resistance or a medicine that can be made out of it. Um, now there are other types of non-use values also. Uh, bequest value and existence uh, value are the two other uh, types of non-use values. Uh, let's look into what is the bequest values. Bequest values refers to the value of uh, an individual ascribes to the knowledge that others may benefit from a resource or service in the future. Now uh, the next category is the existence value. Existence value is derived from the uh, knowledge that an environment, uh, environmental resource or service exists. Now that we've covered about uh, the various uh, categories of values, let's come to this uh, new topic that is environmental economics. economics. Environmental economists often make the distinction between goods and services provided by ecosystems. This di distinction is made based on use and non-use value. Thus, environmental goods have use value while services have non-use value. But 
Often the eco ecosystem uh, goods harvested by people such as fruits or fish or vegetables are products of ecosystem uh, processes such as biotic interactions, energy flow, nutrient cycle, uh, where the goods and services remain interlinked or linked per se. Now let's come to, uh, you know, what are the problems uh, that uh, are associated with ec economic uh, valuation? Economic valuation uh, calculates the value of ecosystem services or goods in terms of money is very difficult per se. However, it has been uh, tried in many cases to help in decision making and uh, research. Example, value of forest can be calculated in terms of the timber to be obtained from it or in terms of the minerals it can be um, you know, gained from mining a particular area in the forest or in terms of local economies that depend on the, uh, on the forest uh, ecosystem for their subsistence. Now this helps in making a cost benefit analysis and a better option can be chosen. This poses many problems in practice though. Now valuation techniques particularly with respect to indirect use values or non-use values involve subjective uh, value judgments of people living in modern urbanized societies. Now application of value, uh, such value judgments to societies with radically different social and cultural uh, and even economic uh, structures poses methodological difficulties and also raise moral and ethical issues. The valuation techniques, uh, techniques are suitable for fully monetized economies with individuals uh, who are well informed about their rights and choices. But some, uh, the same cannot be uh, applied to subsistence economics, having multiple cultures and diverse value systems. For example, river might be valuable uh, as a resource for irrigation for farmers uh, who want to dam it probably so that they can store water for irrigation. While the fishermen uh, depend on uh, fish in the river, uh, with, uh, will prefer a flowing river because it basically nurtures fish diversity. The costs and benefits actual and perceived of a resource will, be, will differ for different sectors of the society and simple valuation may not take into account variations among these different sectors of society and in assigning value to these resources. So valuation of culture, religion, spiritual um, uh, values of nature cannot be calculated at all. Many benefits remain um, difficult to quantify in terms of money. For example, forest dwellers uh, may use a variety of medicinal plants, uh, but their valuation as a healthcare practice is difficult. The productivity um, per se of ecosystem goods, which form the basis of subsistence economies depend on the functioning of the ecosystems. So another problematic um, area that uh, we should discuss is about the valuation in terms of contribution of ecosystems to human knowledge. It is well known that humans are accumulated a large body of practical knowledge about nature due to their close experiences with it. Now plant breeding techniques evolve only by you know only due to close uh, watching the processes of nature natural pollination or selection ex uh, for etc the architecture the art forms have grown through watching architecture in nature and this value eludes all economic considerations now ec um, the environmental economists have attempted to calculate monetary values in many ways Let's take the first scenario. Uh, they, uh, by estimating the number of people who derive their livelihoods from nature is the first aspect that we are going to see. So in India alone, approximately 50 million people are assumed to live in and around forests and presumably derive a subsistence level of uh, their livelihood from forest products. Now in Brazil again, 15 million people or 20% of the economy uh, economically active uh, persons in the Amazon region derive a significant portion of their livelihood from extraction of natural resources. Now the next category that we would be uh, talking about is the value of uh, particular crops of fish etc in market. We can also calculate monetary values uh, by looking at the value of particular crops, fish etc in the market. 
Now the Tengu um, uh, Tendu leaves generate an annual uh, revenue of around 160 million US dollars for the state of Madhya Pradesh in India and contribute to cash income of households. In uh, West Bengal, non-timber products, forest products, including fuel wood and fodder from young generating forests contribute 22% of the cash income of uh, village households in and around the forest. Now, another um, um, uh, way in which it can be calculated, the value can be calculated is uh, the total GDP derived from ecosystem goods. GDP often does not take into account the ecosystem services and the figures for ecosystem goods um, are also under, uh, underestimated. So in India, um, uh, one of the primary uh, um, analysis conducted by Lai in 1992 uh, says that the annual rent from forests for uh, both goods and services and found uh, both goods and services was found to, uh, that the rent is more than 25% of the GDP. Now, officially, the contribution of uh, forestry to GDP is only 12%. The, uh, well, uh, now, the next uh, way in which we uh, calculate the value is the value of services on a, uh, on a per hectare basis in case of ecosystems. Now, for uh, dry deciduous forests in India, it is estimated that the value of non-timber forest products and services such as soil conservation, nutrient cycle and tourism and recreation uh, to be in the range of 5,220 to 8,335 US dollars per hectare per year. Now, such figures are often used by uh, government while claiming compensation from mining companies uh, which cut down uh, a forest for mining purposes. Now the discussion so far uh, shows how the importance of natural resources, various value ascribed to it by human uh, humans and the recent attempts to calculate the values in economic terms per se. Although this is an um, evolving field, it has found many applications in uh, management decisions regarding um, um, conservation, utilization of uh, natural resources, etc. The discussion so far we have uh, known, we have discussed about the introduction about uh, natural resources, the various values uh, that are ascribed to it by humans and also how it is calculated in the economic terms per se. Now, although it is a very evolving field, it uh, researches and various methods are used, these uh, valuation techniques are used for uh, conservation and management of natural resources. For further reading, I would suggest you to go to uh, Epachala Resource uh, Systems and um, also um, I hope that you have learned uh, from this module. Thank you.